What's up guys, Justin here with the sketchupessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out another addition from Twinmotion adding even more great features. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you can access version 2023.2 preview two by going to the Epic Games launcher under the Twin Motion tab. You wanna make sure you select the option for community edition 2023.2 preview two, and then you wanna open that up. Now, there are release notes available for this version, which I can link to in the notes down below that talk through some of these new features. But let's jump over into Twin Motion and take a look at these. So first off, we have the ability to import animated objects now. This is massive for a lot of different reasons, but all you have to do is just click on the button to import and notice how there's now a tab in here for animation. So you can go into your files section right here click on open and you can now import animated FBX, GLTF and GLB files. So this is a model that I downloaded from Mixamo. Notice how you can bring this in right here. We're gonna scale it down a little bit like this, but notice how this model has this animation associated with it. Now there are options over here that you can use to adjust things like the speed of the animation if you wanna do that, you can also set if an animation is going to play once or if it's going to loop and play continuously. This obviously opens up, opens up a ton of possibilities for different kinds of animations that you can create in twin motion. I am all about this and I'm super excited to dig into it more. Um, there are some limitations in here, um, talking through the kinds of animations that are allowed versus animations that aren't. We can get into this in a future video. We might even talk about how to use a program like Blender in order to create an animated FBX or GB, GLB file if you are interested. But make sure you check out those release notes to see the limitations of the animations. So next up, the paint and scatter tools have been updated where now you can use any static mesh from your library. So for example, if I was to drag some lamps in here, which you would probably never want to do, but notice how I can now use this in order to scatter those objects inside of Twin Motion in a way that you couldn't before because you had limitations on what you could import. And so what this means is this means that not only can you use this on library objects, but you can now bring in things like mega scans objects. So say I was to drag a couple of these boulders in here and notice how I can now scatter these boulders along this surface right here. So now the scattering function is significantly better because you don't have those same limitations for what you can bring in. One thing to note is you cannot scatter objects that have one thing to know is you can't scatter objects that have parameters. So for example, if I was to try to bring in like vehicles, right, it wouldn't let me do that because this vehicle has a color parameter associated with it, right? I can come in here and I can adjust the color of the vehicle. What that means is that means if you try to drag it into the populate tab, it's not going to work because those have parameters. So just note things with parameters still do not work with the scatter function. And then you also now have the ability to pin your views from inside a media mode. So if you go into media mode right here and you pick a scene, right? And this is gonna pin specifically the camera view. But if I go over this three dots right here, click on it and then click on media preview, what that's gonna do is that's gonna pin that camera view to your scene right here so that you can see what that's gonna look like even though you're changing your view inside of Twin Motion right here. So say that I was to toggle this HDRI environment off and toggle these lights on like this. Notice how I can fly around the scene and inspect different parts of the viewport while still seeing what that camera view is going to look like right here. You can also adjust the quality of the preview in here by clicking between the low quality and the high. And you can also pop that out like this, if you wanna move it around. You can even move that to a different monitor if you want to. Now, one thing I have not tried, yeah, you can't do multiples at once, right? It's just popping up a window that's going to basically let you view one camera view in the scene, but this is still valuable because you can take something and see what's changing when you're making changes in the viewport to see what your finalized render is gonna look like, even though you're still in here working on different things, right? So I can like move the shoe around and there's parts and pieces of the shoe obviously, but um, you can use this in order to preview those camera views. And so the snow and rain effects have been reworked 
as well. Um, so now what's gonna happen with the snow and rain is first off, if you look at your ground, um, when the rain is coming down, you're gonna get droplet effects on the ground. They've also adjusted the rain so that it's going to change direction or the particles will change direction um, along with the wind. So you can kind of set the direction those particles are falling um, using the wind functionality as well. So there is also an option in here to um, boost the brightness of the precipitation now. And so what that's gonna do, right, is that's gonna allow you to dim or brighten the precipitation in your scene, depending on the effect that you're going for. So drag this all the way to the left, you can't see it at all. Drag it to the right and it's gonna be a really strong effect. And notice how you're kind of getting a fog on the ground as well. So I think the fog is going to be there no matter what. I'm not 100% sure on that because um, the height fog is gonna be something else entirely, right? That's gonna be something more in the background. But in any case, there's also been improvements to the snow and rain effects in twin motion. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about these new features. Do you like them? Are you gonna use them? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you do wanna learn how to use twin motion, make sure you check out my course at thesketchupessentials.com slash twin motion course. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.